Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the AK-12 Assault Rifle. I initially did not like this gun. My first couple games using it, I struggled a little bit, but I adapted and I ended up rather liking it a lot. Enough so much that it kind of stays in one of my permanent classes, not the ones I experiment with in depth, and it's one of my favorite assault rifles, and today I'm going to tell you why, but let's start off with the nuts, bolts, stats of this weapon, which up first always is damage. This is a very high damage assault rifle. It'll deal 49 damage per shot and close quarters combat, meaning two shots will deal 98 damage and almost kill the person, but not quite. It'll take three to four shots to kill. At long ranges, it drops down to 25, so that's why it takes four shots to kill. But this is very, very high, especially in close quarters combat. If the guy's been nicked once, if he's missing a little bit of health, if you flashbang him twice, if he fell two feet, you're going to kill him in two shots very, very quickly. And the 25 damage at long ranges is also very good. That means it's never going to take less than four shots to kill. Other than getting fast kills, the 49 damage will help you penetrate objects better because that means your bullets will be doing more damage on the other side, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Next up, we need to talk about headshots. It has a 1.4x headshot multiplier, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing me say this, but that basically means one less shot to kill at almost any range. Speaking of range, that's where we're getting to the important part of this episode. This is a very long-range weapon. The three-shot kill range on the AK-12 is 40 meters. There's a lot of weapons, they're hitting their minimum at 40 meters, and the AK-12 is still dealing its three-shot damage range. If you put a muzzle break on that, the three-shot range goes up to 48 meters, which is colossal. That's more like LMG kind of ranges. And with the silencer, your penalty is relatively minimal. You'll still deal uh, maximum damage all the way up to 30 meters, so this is a very high-ranged assault rifle. Matter of fact, I think this is the second highest-ranged assault rifle in the game. It is outclassed by the two-shot kill of the MSBS, of course, but then that one drops off. But it is somewhat outclassed by the Remington R5, but we'll talk about that one later on. For now, let's go back to the AK-12 and let's talk about its rate of fire. In order to balance out the high damage, the developers thought it would be a good idea to give this weapon a lower than average rate of fire. It shoots at 689 RPM, which is a little bit on the slow side. It's not terribly slow, it's not crazy slow, but it is a little bit slower than what you would probably want from an assault rifle, but that, again, that has to be fair to balance out the damage. And because it does shoot slow, it has a somewhat slow time to kill. It won't kill quite as fast as the SC-2010, the FAD, or the ARX, in close quarters anyway, but that's to balance the range and the high damage, which I'll spoil a little bit. The high damage is for penetrating walls, which we'll talk about again later on. The recoil is moderate. Statistically, it appears to be moderate, and when I use it, it feels kind of like moderate recoil. However, it's very precise recoil. It's predictable recoil. It kicks up and to the left a bit, so it just kind of drags up and to the left. So you want to drag your sights down and to the right, and even though it says it's moderate and I can kind of get a feel for it, it really feels more low recoil to me. The feel of this weapon is that it with its consistency, I can easily compensate for the recoil, and me personally, I try not to put too many of my personal opinions in in-depth, it feels very consistent, and I believe that after some practice, many of you will kind of master the recoil for this weapon, and it'll feel better, but at first, it may be somewhat difficult. Aim down sights time is 0.3 seconds, that's standard for the assault rifle class, nothing special going on there, quick draw, of course, will help that out. Reload times are definitely on the slow side of things, with an empty reload taking 3.6 seconds, a full reload, meaning if you have a round still in the chamber, 3.3 and even your reload cancel time is 2.03 seconds which is a little bit longer than most reload cancel times that makes this weapon more difficult to reload cancel because I'm used to reloading canceling in about a second maybe a second and a half so I'll try to do my sprint reload cancel early and kind of goof this up you're going to need to take some time to master the reload cancel on this one but as always I would recommend that you do it magazine size standard for assault rifles 30 rounds in the magazine you put extended mags on it goes up to 45 for some reason I actually did like extended mags on this weapon it was not at all a bad choice. Uh, I kind of threw my bullets away like candy is probably why. So uh, doing that and giving yourself extra ammo capacity is definitely a good idea. The iron sights are excellent. Really, honestly, I like the iron sights for once. This is the part of the episode where most people would like to lay into me for not liking the iron sights, but on the AK-12, I feel that the iron sights are very good. They're not obstructive, they're clear, I can track targets easily, they don't shake very much, and I have the uh, bar in the middle that allows me to do very, very precise shooting at long ranges. Because the iron sights are so good, I'm going to say that optics aren't going to be needed. Red dot sights are nice, of course, and the thermal sight's fun to play with. Tracker sight's a little bit less fun, it's a little bit difficult to use, but you really won't be needing any of these sights for your AK-12. The AK-12 is best used with iron sights, and you use your other attachment slots on more useful things like a foregrip, or FMJ, or extended mags, or a silencer, or just something like that. Because, uh, you know, the benefit of a red dot on this gun is minimal. 
When it comes to my personal opinion of the AK-12, I'll say that this is a very consistent feeling weapon, and that when you pick it up and you play with it for a little while, it will feel very consistent for you as well, and it's best at medium to long ranges. At close range, it still has the 49 damage, which is good, so if you're fighting somebody that's slightly injured or jumped off a barrel or a crane to kill you, you can kill them in two shots, which is great. That's oftentimes not the case, and if you miss more than a few shots at close range, your time to kill gets very, very slow due to the RPM. So it's best at medium range because it maintains a comparatively high damage and time to kill and all that sort of stuff at medium range and it's not bad at long range either either because you only need four shots to kill it's not one of those five shot kill long range weapons this is a four shot kill weapon so you can still duke on people at longer ranges if you're a little bit more accurate or if you shoot in burst now we're getting to the end of the episode, I'm going to give you some class and perk recommendations, some things to try out. Class number one, I think you should use Grip and Silencer. This is probably the number one go-to class for everybody on planet Earth that uses the AK-12. When I'm playing online, I see this the most. When I played myself, I had the best experience with this class. Use Foregrip and plus a Silencer. Use Off the Grid and Stalker. Uh, if you're not really worried about being on the radar, I would tell you you might could trade that out for Quick Draw or something. But Stalker is absolutely going to be necessary with this class because because you know you have Iron Sights, you're probably going to be thinking SMGs. You're going to want to sidestep a little bit. That helps a lot. Off the Grid also very good, but maybe could be traded out. Class number two is another Iron Sights class. We're going to go with Muzzle Break and Extended Mags. This is sort of the maximum damage class for this weapon. You're going to be shooting as far as you possibly can. Extended Mags is going to give you the extra ammunition so that you can throw bullets out there like they're candy and don't even worry about it you got extra supply in your back you're definitely going to need sleight of hand with this class for the fast reloading if you're going to be spamming that extended mag pretty hard focus is going to help a lot that's going to help you win gunfights and of course stalker again because we're using the iron sights there are classes that i would recommend not using stalker on and guns that i don't recommend stalker on but the ak-12 is a very stalker friendly gun there are some other uh, perks you can do well that you would do well with that you can use to build classes on the ak-12 works surprisingly well with Deadeye. If you don't remember from the Deadeye episode, it's basically stopping power but kind of randomized and it gets stronger the more people you kill up to 50%. And the AK-12 is in a couple of ranges with that 49 damage per shot in close quarters combat. That could maybe go up a little bit and you could get a two shot kill. At long ranges it drops off to 25 and with an increase in damage that can make it a three shot kill or it could even increase your two shot kill range. So while most of the assault rifles don't benefit much from Deadeye, I believe the AK-12 does. It does not get an optimal benefit, mind you these smaller submachine guns get the best but when I played with Deadeye I had a generally good experience and Deadeye is one that I would recommend or say that you could use especially if you're going for the specialist Moab streaks. It's also not a bad choice for armor piercing ammo tying all the way back into the beginning. 49 damage per shot. Whenever you shoot through a wall, there is a damage reduction. So on the other side of the wall, it might come out at like 30 damage or 35 or something like that. However, if you put the armor piercing ammo on there, it's basically FMJ from Call of Duty's past and you can punch through the wall easier and you'll maintain that very high damage on the other side of the wall. So it's very good for wall banging people. Also good for chewing through flak jackets, which are kind of annoying or my bad ballistic vests. That's what it is. Well, guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, which is on the Honey Badger, you can click that box on the left, and it'll open a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, that's going to be on the FAD, it's another weird assault rifle, you can click that box. It'll also open in a new window, and as always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out!